Hey guys, uh, in part two of my interview with Brian from Let's Build That App, we're going to be discussing what makes a good first programming language, specifically is, is Swift or a good programming language to start off with, sort of the importance of social media, and we talked about various social medias that we use and uh, how they help us as developers and in our YouTube channels. We also talk about trying to try, try to reach out to female developers and capture that audience a little bit of how can we connect because uh, as I've said about 90% of my audience at least is male and 10% female but there are more female developers so we have kind of a philosophical topic about about how we've tried certain things and some have succeeded some have failed and then in part three uh, we will be discussing uh, our philosophical thoughts on traditional education boot camps self-taught what works for us and you know kind of dive into that and uh for me personally i really enjoyed that so i hope you guys uh, check that part out as well enjoy um in terms of uh, ios is in in swift i believe is the the programming language um yeah yeah this is, you can see you can, you can see I'm very in in the iOS community. I have to ask that question, right? I'm not 100 percent sure, right? <laughs> so, uh, uh, how how is Swift for? It's 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 kind of crazy, right? So it, it's a uh, you know it's like we need you to know these ten languages. All right, I'll I'll see what I can do. I I got two. <laughs> uh, so how is Swift as a, um, I'm a I'm an aspiring developer in this situation. I want to pick up my first programming language. Is Swift a, a language that is a, a good entry level language or should is there something that you would recommend other than that and maybe come back to it as your, your secondary to start? All right. So this is, this is a pretty common question where it's really difficult to decide. <clears throat> So I think the the common the deciding factor on whether or not a language is good for your first language, I guess there's like three things. The first thing is accessibility. Like, do you even have a MacBook to use Swift at all? Because that's the easiest platform to use it on. And MacBooks are expensive. You know, people don't have MacBooks, right? If you have a MacBook, then the second thing is do you like iOS, right? If you don't like iOS, then don't use Swift. You're not going to like it. And then thirdly, do you find yourself enjoying Xcode, the, I, the, the editor, the IDE? If those three things are like yes, yes, and yes, then yeah, you'll, you'll find Swift to be enjoyable. Otherwise, you're going to hate it. <clears throat> you're probably going to find something like even just JavaScript a lot easier to learn because you, just, you type out some JavaScript in the even the Google the Chrome console thing, and you can just execute it right away. It's like a lot faster. Yeah, I find that with learning something new, especially if you it, it is your first language, sometimes setup is a very big barrier of entry, and it, it doesn't necessarily have to be. But if you don't have anybody kind of helping out there. I could, I could see how something where like I could just open up the browser and put console log and now I feel like a coding god writing my my, my first line of code. Yeah, um, it's it's all about like what can you get running like as quickly as possible to verify that you know what the hell you're doing. If you can do that really quickly, then that's the language that you should start with. Whatever that is. Nice. Now where can um obviously you have a YouTube channel, we'll link to that. Um do you have any uh, other social media platforms so people can follow and make sure they stay up to date on what you're up to? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so I have a Twitter handle, which is at build that app. And then I have this Facebook page that you can join if, if you're into my channel. Um, I've always debated whether or not to start like a, an Instagram thing, but I have no <laughs> idea. Like, what am I going to post? Like pictures of myself coding? That's weird. That's I. You know, it's funny that you say that because that's something that I've thought about as well. Because people have asked me, "Hey, do you have an Instagram?" And I kind of have a personal one, but I, I don't upload on it really all that often. And I can tell you right now, I will never get a Snapchat. I don't. I don't understand it. But uh, it's a. 
it's one of those things where like I feel like I should like it makes a smart business decision, but it doesn't make a smart like is it going to be a pain in my ass decision? And like that's 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 something that I'm I'm debating at the same time. So yeah, yeah, I totally get that too. Like I so I I'm assuming that we both have a ranking of all the social platforms that are most productive and uh, provide us with the most value, like in terms of investment. So for me, it's probably like the Facebook group and then Twitter. And then I have the LinkedIn trailing at the very last then. And uh, sometimes I don't even post on LinkedIn, even though it's like, it's, it's not that bad. No, how do you, how do you, cause I, I've, I, uh, I've thought about posting on LinkedIn, maybe some videos of me talking about things that I think are appropriate to talk on LinkedIn, but I'm kind of hesitant. I never have. What do you find that you get, uh, that people, you know, it helps, uh, and people are watching or commenting on them. How, what is sort of the engagement in your experience? Uh, yeah. So each one of those LinkedIn posts that I, I put up, they get about I think like 1500 views just on LinkedIn. It's hard to, determine how many of those views convert into YouTube views. But those are the insights that LinkedIn, the platform gives you. So it's better than nothing. And for the most part, because I'm not working for anyone, like I don't have a, an employer, I don't have to worry about, oh, is my employer gonna, gonna come, come to me and ask me why I'm putting this stuff up? I can see how if you're working for someone that it becomes a kind of a gray area there. Yeah, there's um, there's a lot of it's a it's an interesting thing where um, people I, I I I just did a video about this and it's actually my most disliked video of all time. <laughs> so uh, maybe people don't necessarily agree, uh, but I basically the the point of the I was talking about the Google engineer that got fired and the point I was trying to get across was that what you put out into the world can have real world consequences regardless if you agree with it or not. That every company is going to say that you know your social media is a representation of the company. It's going to be writing your contract, and they're going to get fired because of it. And so I I've said that in numerous occasions that I'd never put a video out that I wouldn't feel comfortable sitting next to the CEO of the company and watching. And sometimes I think I've recorded several videos, and I've I rewatch every video I put out before I actually put it out, and then I've. There's been about five where I was like, you know what? I don't think I can put this out into the world. This, because it's, it's a, it's a, it's a sort of a you got to balance the the pros and the cons of it. But it's an interesting position to be in. Yeah, I think I've watched your video. The most risque one I would say would be the Code Babe one. A Code Babe. Yes, that was something I I I I was debated about, but I, I felt like it had to be done. <laughs> <laughs> in the name of like good code, de good developers. Yeah. In, in the in the name of of I in the name of just something that shouldn't even exist. <laughs> like it's just something. I there's 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 a platform for that somewhere. It's just not on YouTube. I think is what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think I agreed with <clears throat> I agreed with. All of your points, except for the fact that these things, they have to exist. They have to exist just to prove that it's something that should happen or should not happen. Just, just to validate itself, these things should show up every now and then. Yeah, I, I can agree with that where, you know, you kind of have this sort of standout sort of outlier where you, they're like, that's what not to do. You know, like, 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 like I, it, I can understand that. And they're always going to exist. You know, there's a lot of things in that that we wish didn't, but they will. And uh, this is, I guess, a very limited case of not trying to come off too salty as a, a coding channel. <laughs> so, <laughs> a coding channel is doing much better than my own. Um, so well, it's a. I, I've, I think we both just kind of like, on a, on a separate tangent on that that video, like we've always come upon these really click baity uh videos and i myself i've i mean we probably fall in the same boat <clears throat> in terms of like female audience engagement and i'm always trying to find out how i can reach out to more females in my target audience and if i had like a female on my channel doing coding i feel like i could somehow latch on to that female audience but then at the same time, I don't want to use her just for like her, 
for looks and try to get the audience that way. But there's really no other way other than doing that. I haven't figured it out either. Um, I've actually reached out to girls who code and a couple, um, like, like this, because I, you know, I, I don't know what your analytics are, but 88% of my audience is male and 12% is female. And there's, I'm sure there's more female developers out there. So how can I, how can I reach out to them? One thing I tried to do was I reached out to a couple coding organizations that were targeted at females. So it's like, okay, let me, let me interview some of these people. Let me try to start, set something up and not one got back to me. So I don't, <laughs> I don't know. They're like, that's the enemy. <laughs> I don't know if it's where the enemy, I feel like it's because it just comes off creepy no matter how you do it. I haven't figured out how to slide into that zone where it's like, oh, hey, I have a video channel. Do you want to come set up something and we can videotape it together? It's, it's just weird. Yeah, I, I mean, the, I think the, I bet if I went back and I looked at my analytics, so I, for like 30 days, I was trying to teach my girlfriend how to code. And I bet if I looked at the analytics at that, because I've had several female subscribers tell me that is how they found my channel. And it, it could just be a coincidence. But I bet if I went back and looked at that, that maybe that was something where they could relate a little bit more to, to what she was struggling with and that having a maybe a female perspective uh, in in this software conversation helped. So it is – I just – I haven't figured out the goal. Because there it, it really is, at the end of the day, there's there has to be an audience. And – it's just smart business kind of reach out and you know we want i want everybody to learn to code not just a bunch of dudes right <laughs> yeah yeah and i just recently got back from this shanghai trip where I, I taught shanghai kids how to code and it was a bunch of high school students but i think about 60 to 65 percent of the students out of 30 students were female students and this is the trend that we'll keep seeing we'll see more and more females join and I mean, we have to figure out how to how to how to get better at engaging that audience. Yeah, I was just gonna get super buff and just hope my my charm and good looks attracts. Yeah. <laughs> no, I have <laughs> too much work actually. Uh, the last thing I need is my girlfriend yelling at the commenters. <laughs> it just <laughs> to write in nasty comments on multiple accounts. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. I don't know what the secret is, but. Um, I just feel like as dudes, as guys that code, we understand like exactly why we code and we have like this vision as to, oh, if I put this out there, we're just going to engage the male audience. But it's like, we, I mean, I personally, maybe you might not agree with this, but like makeup channels, makeup tutorials, like I have, you know, my own opinion on why, or if those are like useful videos at all. And I, you know, I personally think they're a waste of time, but obviously to women that they're not, right? So there's something there that we have to target. Yeah, I, I, I don't understand them either, but I can tell you, I know my girlfriend watches a shit ton of them. So like, they're doing something right. And they're making money, man. Those makeup channels, like there's, it's, yeah. it's, it's crazy to think how much money they actually may, make selling makeup. Yeah, yeah. You know what's the just the strange phenomenon that I see these days at makeup stores? Like, little girls will just go to L'Oreal or Sephora and they'll pull out their phones and watch. They'll literally watch the videos while they're picking out what lipstick or mascara to buy right now. So, yeah, it's it's so. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. If you happen to be looking for a boot camp, I couldn't recommend Dev Mountain any higher they also include housing with their tuition so you can get up and go and get started right away thanks again for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video bye